Now, I often sit down and think what I should review next or what to put into the programme for that week. I must admit to having my personal preferences for a programme or two. And then, out of the blue, a company comes up with a suggestion that hits my desk at just the right time. And all the stars become aligned. Welcome to AAR on Air. FAC time this week. This is going to be one of a two part programme, sort of. You see, I mentioned to Carl at Vector Air I had an idea to do a review of a 0.25 cal FAC rifle and maybe stretch it out a little on the range. I was interested to do this because I was looking to add one to my ticket. Then, whilst I was talking to the really helpful guys at BSA about something completely different, they completely, out of the blue, asked if I wanted to review a 2.5 cal FAC R10. Well, that's like asking a teenager if he wants to spend an evening with the whole college cheerleader group. <laughs> Just how quickly can you say yes? BSA soon found out the answer to that question. The other rifle I chose was an AGT Vulcan 3 0.25 FAC Long. Now the first thing to point out here is this isn't going to be a comparison couple of programmes because they are in a very different price range and they are both from favourite companies of mine anyway. There will also be slightly different layout reviews as well. Because the AGT Vulcan 3 is an, in an unchoked barrel format and I will be testing some slugs with it as well. So this week I'm going to start with the more expensive of the two, the AGT Vulcan 3 Long. It is worth taking a moment to look at the calibre itself first. You see, 0.25 is quite a weighty pellet at around or over 30 grains, and in a sub 12 foot pound gun will hit a hard punch, but really only cover over shorter distances well. A sub 12 0.25 will make a heck of a ratter over 20 to 25 metres in sub 12, maybe around barns and the like, but to take anything larger out at greater distances, I would choose a different calibre or go for the FAC version. Or if you really must have a 0.25 in sub 12, then in the case of the AGT Vulcan 3, take the shorter barrel option. So why would people want to avoid the 0.25 calibre over greater distances? Well, because the arc it will take and the loss of energy would be pretty unacceptable, really. I have experienced people buying this calibre and expecting to be bench rest competition, <laughs> competition winners out at 100 metres in sub-12. It would be like me being allowed by Mrs AAR to sell the house to own a Ferrari. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, back to the gun. And as always, the stats and walk around first. This Vulcan 3 is the long version, as I've already said, and as such is just short of 100 centimetres or around 39 inches long, with a 70 centimetre or 27 and a half inch barrel and is 3.7 kilograms or around 8.1 pounds unscoped in this beautiful walnut wood finish. In sub 12, this is a very quiet gun, but in this version, it does increase the volume as the power increases, but nowhere near as much as you would expect. But there is the amazing AGT 40 millimeter fit 150mm long silencer moderator which naturally will add another 150mm to the overall length figures but it does a great job at cutting some of that extra noise out which is probably the point to start the walk around 
The silencer matches up beautifully with the shrouded barrel and does make quite a big difference to the overall bark, sounding more like a junior low-powered rifle in the end. The real noise actually comes from the target downrange when you hit it. Wow! Moving back down that shrouded, unchoked CZ barrel, we come to that beautiful carbon bottle, which holds a whopping 580 cc's of air, up to 300 bar, to help maximise the shot count on this gorgeous bullpup. The exact shot count will naturally depend upon the power output you have it set to. More about that later. Below this is an elongated rail for bipods or whatever takes your fancy. This is attached to the ergonomic skeletal ambidextrous stock. The filler point and gauge are just above that at the base of that carbon bottle. The dust plug is there to keep out any unwanted dirt. The gauge itself is an AGT labelled item and whilst on the smaller side is clear and easy to read. Of course, filling an AGT is made easier by the inclusion of a bottle valve with every gun, which has the filler probe pre-fitted for you. This also helps to regulate the airspeed in which the gun is filled. Don't forget, you also get your complimentary pen, keyring and of course two magazines, which in the case of the 2.5 cal are 10 round capacity magazines. And whilst we're on the extras, you also get a high quality padded carrier bag to keep it nice and safe. Let's get back to the gun. The trigger on this is a beautiful two stage item and for me was set pretty much right straight out of the box. Of course, it's adjustable. The safety is an in-trigger item and only comes into operation when the gun is cocked. Then it's pushed forward for fire and pulled back for safe. It doesn't get in the way though or make you feel that you're going to accidentally catch the trigger when you're looking for it. The grip is slightly bulbous but very comfortable and the finish to that stock is very high quality with no rough edges anywhere. AGT are now starting to produce different coloured laminate stocks after asking Vector Air for their feedback on improving their range. More on that when I can get my hands on some. The side lever is positive. The action is defined, smooth, and quality. It is also fully interchangeable from left to right to suit either left-handed shooters or personal preferences. Lots of right-handed shooters are starting to prefer the action on the left-hand side these days for faster reloading. The top scope rail is definitely set for the longer range shooters with a 20 MOA angle to it. The rear cheek rest is a polymer based item to save the cold feeling on your cheek. I'm not going to get that today, it's roasting in here. But it follows the lines and coloration of the rest of the metal chassis. At the rear it, there is the magazine slot which in usual AGT style accepts the magazine from left hand side but once it's in fits almost flush and invisible and it disappears. Now I was around when Carl checked this out on the bench to make sure it was set correctly and it was then dropped over the chronograph at that time, at which point two grinning schoolboys appeared out of two grown adult men when the chronograph saw 995 feet per second loaded with 33.95 grain pellets, which was just short of 75 foot-pounds or over 101 joules. And even at this power level, it is possible to see around 60 plus shots per fill, which is amazing. Now, if you're wondering why some air guns need a firearm certificate, well, that power figure should answer your question.
These are definitely not toys, and I for one fully agree with the need for a license for guns like these. But if you have a need for one and a justifiable reason, this will definitely do the job and put a huge grin on your face at the same time. Wow. But treat them with utmost care and watch your backstops. Now, it is very easy to just get a gun and wind it up to 11, as it were, but power is nothing without control. Firing Diablo pellets at such high speeds can cause them to become unstable, depending on the ballistic coefficient of the pellet, the temperature and air pressure, which can alter the speed of sound. I kid you not because pellets travelling at or over the speed of sound can become unstable and, of course, this means inaccurate. Well, at Nias, on 75 foot-pounds, this was proving to be too much for this Vulcan 3 and the ammunition I was using. So I went back to Carl for a more sensible power setting and he worked his magic, reducing the power down to around 60 to 65 foot-pounds. And lo and behold, it was now behaving just as a Vulcan 3 usually does. With those big numbers out of the way, let's get some more bigger numbers out and get this out on the range. Naturally, I've dropped my Continental Scope onto it because it really does demand such a high quality scope to match this gun. I also took the time to do some testing of pellets. I tried the JSB Exact King Heavies at 33.95 grain and the lighter 26.54 grain JSB Hades and it definitely preferred the Hades, which isn't too much of a surprise as a lot of guns do prefer the Hades to the standard JSB shapes. So, out on the range, here goes Vulcan 3, set up with Continental Scope. <laughs> it's one of my all-time favourites is this, and I'm not alone with that as you talk to the guys at Vector Air. And it's obvious why. Now, this is the long version, as we've already said in the studio, and it's really best aimed for FAC rather than sub 12. Now, the other thing you can do, not that it's overly loud to be fair, it, because the barrel is shrouded, it's a long 700 millimeter barrel, but put another 150 on it, it does make it quite a long beast but it quietens it down even more, even though it's not really over loud anyway. I've been shooting it a lot of the day without putting that on, and it's really, really quiet. But that said, let's uh, get it down range. Um, we're shooting out at 40, 60 and 80. And if you've ever wondered what that sort of distance is, I'll show you a little later. Uh, it's quite a way off down there, but here we go. Let's give it a go. A bit windy today, but it's quite handy having that uh, side lever on the left hand side. You don't actually need to take your hand away from the grip or your finger off the trigger. The wind is playing up a bit today. There it comes again. I'm continuing through because I want to see what difference it is with a 2.5. Doesn't, that's it, that's the magazine there, all 10 rounds on a 2.5. Doesn't have to make a thump down that bottom end. Okay, let's have a look now 
at stretching it out a little bit more and see where we go. I'll go and move the target further down. Target now out at 60 metres, it was 40 before. We've got it, <coughs> excuse me, right down now to the backstop, right at the bottom of the paddock. And the next lot we're going to do, which is 80, we're going to have to go back up. But here we go, let's try this one. So far, so good. Much prefers to be a little bit less on power than just winding it up to the max. Wind again. The wind is actually having an effect on this. Still really pleasing results. The pro problem we've got in the paddock here is you can see a lot of trees. You, you can't see everything, but there's a lot of trees. But then there's a big strip that goes down the middle that hasn't got trees in. And the wind has a tendency to really blow down there. And of course you're shooting through what's just like a wind tunnel. Next move out to 80. Ever wondered what the size of, say, a pigeon's head is out at 80 metres? Something that you're quite likely to want to hit if you're going to do a clean dispatch? Well, this is what 80 metres looks like, and we'll walk it. It's not the easiest of things to do, and one of the things that I do is what I've classed as the beer bottle top challenge. Set 10 beer bottle tops out, make sure you can hit all 10 for that clean dispatch of your quarry, if indeed that's what you're doing, or if you actually want to be able to achieve success in target. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, and it's a long way to walk. And bear in mind, I set targets up at this distance, walk all the way back, then, out of breath, have to settle down to start doing the filming and the shooting. So, if you're going to choose to do this over this kind of distance, make sure you've got the right gun. <laughs> right. Set out now, 80 metres. That's a heck of a way down there. Uh, I could go back further, but I think 80 metres is, uh, is more than uh, enough. Let's give it a go and see how we fare out at 80 metres, shall we? There's a bit of a delay to get in there. Eighty meters. To be honest, the wind. Obviously, the further you go out, the more the wind does have an impact. Uh, without the wind, it's grouping really quite well. It's not pellet on pellet. It's not likely to be, or, or slug on slug, whichever it is you're using. It's not likely to be, but it is more than enough of a grouping. And whilst I would probably struggle nine, ten times out of ten to actually hit paintballs, I feel very confident that I could hit uh, beer bottle tops at that kind of distance with this gun. I feel very confident that it would do that. I have earlier on tried 
Uh, I've got some washers, two pence piece type washers down there and it's shooting those at that kind of distance. So it, it's well capable. It didn't need to be as powerful as we'd got it set up. It's much better off finding that balance of power to the pellet, to the conditions as to what you want to do. And the long barrel suits the FAC much better than it suits the sub 12. Certainly in 0.25, those are my findings. It's a nice gun, I've always liked it, I still like it. And there's a lot more to talk about, so back to the studio. So out at 40 meters using Hades pellets, it was just one big hole in the target. Stretched out to 60 meters on what was a very windy day, it did open up a little. And out at 80 meters, the wind was starting to spoil the day's target work. But as soon as it calmed down, the groups started to appear nicely yet again. 40, 60, 80. It was now becoming quite evident why the guys at Vector Air have these as one of their favourite guns. Then I asked Vector for some slugs in 0.25 because this barrel was unchoked and I wanted to see if slugs made a noticeable difference in that situation. Well, I had a real assortment of slugs. These are just a few of them. And they were all in lots of different weights. And it became pretty obvious that it preferred the H&N Grizzly slugs at 31 grains. Certainly set at this power level. Then I shot a string of Hades without changing the zero. After all, it was the grouping that I was interested in. That was the Hades. Those were the Grizzlies. The others were different sets of slugs. So, Hades, H&N Grizzlies. In all honesty, I was happy with either, and they, either of these two, which gave the best results out at 60 meters. Of course, it's the wand that chooses the wizard, or in this case, the barrel that chooses the ammo, and the power level that you've got it set to as well, because that could alter the preference. Sadly, I didn't have the time with this gun to be able to go toing and froing to get the power level adjusted for each and every slug or pellet configuration, but it could well be a task to the end user who may wish to get the maximum performance from it. I realise this isn't going to be on any budget gun list, but for anyone who is serious about their shooting, the high quality of these AGT makes them value for money, certainly in my opinion. I realise not everyone can afford the £1,650 price tag, but for those who can afford it, looking for a high quality, high power gun, I assure you they won't be disappointed. I admit to having an ulterior motive to this review. You see, I am looking for a 0.25 cal to use at home, but one with a decent power level and shot count. I will be getting rid of the bazooka, as Mrs. AAL calls it, the Daystate Wolverine with its 95 foot pound plus 0.303 thump. Not exactly what you would call compact, and really too much for what I now have use for it. I knew I would enjoy this week's gun, and I'm also really looking forward to the next 0.25 cal offering, again from a true favourite gun and gun company of mine, the BSA R10. 
Can the amazing cold hammer forge barrel work as well in 0.25 cal? Hmm. Well, I will hopefully be finding out. If you've enjoyed this week's programme and want to see a few more FAC guns, then please let me know and give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the old alarm bell. Visit the AAR News channel for more ad hoc news and snippets of information. Carry on the chats on these forums and Airgun Factory. There is the AAR website for merch, etc. And a big thank you to Carl at Vector Air for taking the time to set this thing up for me to use and review. And finally, of course, a big thank you to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. And to the guys out there for using the super thanks button. It all helps the channel and is very much appreciated. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe and shoot safe and hopefully I'll see you next time. I'm off to use up some more air and lead. Bye for now. <laughs>